much. And uh, what an honor it is to stand before you just to minister the word this, this, uh, this afternoon. And uh, uh, the first two services were just amazing. And if you get the opportunity to get the CDs, you really want to get those. And um, it's amazing because uh, in both the uh, messages, um, they use this one passage of scripture. And I'm looking at my notes. I got to get that scripture in my notes. <laughs> and uh, actually, it does fit with what I'm sharing uh, this morning. But uh, I brought the towel up. Um, and let's just pray before we, we start. Uh, as you said, Pastor Robbie and Monica, they're up in Boston. And they're um, ministering at uh, Bishop Brian Green's church this week. I think they've been up there since the middle of this week. Uh, and uh, like I said, it's just a privilege and honor just to be able to share with you this, this, after, this afternoon. Um, so let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for boldness and declaring your truth. Help us today to be clear about what you want to say to us. Not so much what I want to say, but God, what you want to say, how you want to speak to our hearts, how you want to encourage us and strengthen us and cause us to walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ. And so we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So, um, first of all, I went to, uh, uh, my son and I drove to, uh, North Carolina yesterday. We went to, uh, Cameron Indoor and we saw my nephew play, uh, basketball. He plays for Northwest Missouri State. They're a division two, uh, national championship champions. And, uh, the first game of every uh, season, Duke plays the champion of Division II basketball. And so I had never seen my nephew play. And my brother would always send me all these accolades. You need to see your nephew play. He can really play. He can really play. Well, he went to Duke, and I said, he's in Duke. And it was just crazy in that place. And, you know, all that blue. And there was a whole lot of devils running around in the place. That was really strange, right, first of all. And so we were rebuking devils, first and foremost. There's a guy running around with horns. And we're walking to the parking lot, and all these people with horns. I said, this is just crazy. And my, uh, my nephew just threw down. He just, he had much game. He threw up 37, uh, excuse me, 27 points on Duke, and um, Duke thought it was going to be a blowout. Of course, they lost. I mean, my, my uh, nephew's team lost by six points, but if you're a Duke fan, I hate you. No, I'm okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was just one of those things, but it was just a great experience. But one of the things that when we were growing up, there's a couple things that if you could, if you play basketball, and you didn't have any game, and you got in a game, and you went in for a layup, and somebody threw your stuff into the bleachers, what they would do is they take a towel, and they throw the towel in on you. I mean, the guys would be sitting on the court, and they just throw a towel at you and say, you have no game, get off the court. And then also, and it's really funny, because when somebody does that to you, it's really embarrassing. And then uh, when you're boxing, uh, if you're in a boxing match with the... Uh, your corner guy would do is that if he was seeing you get beat up pretty bad, he would take the towel. <laughs> and, and this is a pretty, I don't, we don't have any white towels in our house. What's that all about? Okay, so anyway. <laughs> we have just, we, and so I, I just grabbed the towel because what it looks like is that you were down, you're defeated, and someone else makes a decision to say that you're done. So my question to you first, well, let me tell you, as far as a message, if you want a title, it's going to be take a stand. Um, because just when you're down and someone is ready to count you out and the referee hasn't made his assessment and said this fight is over and you're down and you're just about ready to get, you know, you're like, God, I'm beat, but I, I can think I can still fight some more. And someone throws the towel in on you. And they say, you're done. And you didn't get it any, you know, because what you'll see if you watch a boxing match, what you'll see is this guy, he's down, and he's starting to get up, and he realized somebody just threw the towel on him. See, let me give you a word this morning. God's not done with you yet. There's a whole lot of fight still left in you. You see, when others are looking at your life and they think there's nothing left in him, 
He did, you know, he's so defeated. He's down, you know, because it's that whole thing. When you're down and you're down on your knees and you're just, you don't realize I'm on my knees because I'm about to get back up. I am not, I am about to get up and stand again. And so this, this morning, this afternoon, I keep, I have to realize we're in the afternoon here. If I can get this thing to turn on. It's not over. Why make a stand? There's a couple of reasons why we make a stand. One is because of the choice that you've made. The moment you made a choice to live godly in Christ Jesus, you were going to be under attack. The enemy realizes that the fight was on, and the Bible says it like this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. says, Indeed, all who delight in pursuing righteousness and are determined to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be hunted and persecuted because of their faith. God knows the choices you've made and will allow all you own, your family and, and you personally, to be tested. So you've got to make a stand because God knows. God knows who you are. Listen, in uh, Luke chapter 7, and you know, like the gentleman that spoke and, and Derek and Ricky spoke this morning, they used this passage of scripture in Luke chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. And it's talking about, it says, Behold a woman in the city who was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. And I realized as we, they were sharing this this morning, there was something about the fact that she stood behind him. And I said, God, why would she just stand behind you and cry? Because what the enemy wants us to be is so ashamed of a fall that we've made or a failure that we've had in our lives. And we don't even want to look Jesus in the face. All we want to do is stand behind him and weep and cry. And Jesus recognizes our tears and he recognizes that we're feeling down. But in the end, he talks to the woman. He says, listen, your sins are forgiven. Get back up. It's going to be okay. You can make a stand. So the whole thing is you may be crying right now and you may have made a mistake that's really like, God, I don't know if you're going to accept. Listen, being ashamed of failure is something that we'll all go through because we're all going to have failures. But when we recognize, oh, hear me this morning, when you recognize that Jesus knows the decisions that you've made, Jesus knows the commitment that you've made and how you said, Lord, I'm going to serve you regardless. And when you get down and, and when things are, you're struggling through things and you're just, oh God, I just, I failed again. And Jesus said, listen, I see your tears. I know you're behind me. Come on around here in front of me so I can see you. Because you're not unworthy to me because you've made a failure. You're not rejected by me because of what you, where you've missed the mark. You're not re rejected by me because of sin in your life. Because we have this advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, wherein we can confess our sins. And he will, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there's a cleansing that we can experience just by looking in the face of Jesus and understanding that he knows what we go through, that he knows what we experience in our lives. Hallelujah. I, uh, I was reading about how that God knows the choices that we've made. And uh, I recognize that, I said this earlier, I said that God will allow you to be tested. God will let you go through some things. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying. In Job chapter 1, it says, in the Lord, verse 8, it says, And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Now, here's the thing about this whole passage is, the devil's going back and forth looking for somebody he can mess with. And God says, Have you considered Eric Patton? <laughs> Have you considered Allison Mitchell, Rebecca? Have you considered them? They love me. They skew evil. They walk uprightly. They're great people. Have you skewed them? And so I'm like, Jesus, you know, you don't have to offer me up. <laughs> you know, 
I mean, this service stuff is good, but you just like, what do you mean have you considered me? You know, and then, you know, and, and then, uh, and, and Satan says to the God, he says, behold, all that he has is in your hand and only against him. But he, and, and God tells Satan, he says, behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of God. So God tells the devil, he said, just go ahead and get him. Get him. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's just not right. That's just like, God, you just set me up. Oh, y'all, you see, y'all looking at me like deer in headlight. You mean God actually said, yeah. Oh, you think, oh, listen, listen. Job chapter 2. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant, LaDon Hudgens, that there's none like her on the earth? a blameless and upright woman who fears God, turns away from evil. She still holds fast her integrity, although you incited me against her to destroy her without reason. Oh, really? Oh, you got to hear what I just said. She didn't do anything wrong. You're not in sin. You haven't missed the mark. You've been living uprightly before God. You've been doing all that God has required for you in your life. And in the midst of this, God says to the devil, listen, go ahead and try him. Go ahead and try him. And in the end, you see him sitting on the side of the road, scraping sores on his body with a rock because he's been attacked. Because God said, listen, I'm j I just want to show you how faithful my people are. I want to show you that no matter what you do to them, they're going to stand back up. I want you to know that they're going to receive my blessing whether you attack them or not. I don't care what it looks like to them, but let me tell you what their heart looks like to me. And so they're weeping and they're struggling and they're going through it and their friends are caught. Listen, your friends are just your best friends when you're going through something. Obviously, you've sinned. Obviously, you've missed the mark. God just doesn't attack anybody for any reason at all. You have had to have done something. But in Job, I said, Lord, he didn't do anything. That means that there are things that I go through. You're just stuck. You just told the devil to get me for no reason at all. <laughs> oh, you can make a stand. Let me give you three thoughts because I, I want to get through that. There's a stand you have to take. Uh, listen, we may kneel before God, but we stand against our enemies. Let me say that again. We kneel before God. We humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We bow our hearts. We incline our ear. We're down on the floor and we're, we're just calling out to God. We kneel before God because in prayer in those places, in those secret places we have with God, God, we can cry out to God. But when we come before our enemy, we stand. I don't stand before, I stand before my enemies. I don't kneel before my enemies. I don't submit myself to the devil. I submit myself unto God who is able to help me and to lift me up and to encourage me and to strengthen me. So in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10 through 13, I, I, I'm just going to say a couple things. We stand in truth. We stand in peace. We stand in faith. We stand in, in our salvation. We stand in the word of the Lord and prayer and awareness, our absolute tools we use to defeat that, we, that which comes against us. Other people, the devil, even in our own minds, we may think at times we can't get back up again and stand once a, a fall has occurred. But God has given us these great tools that we can stand no matter what. Amen. That God will, call, will raise us up in an hour when everyone else thinks that you should be throwing in the towel. When everyone else looks at your circumstances and they look at your situations, they say there's no way God is going to come through for you. God is going to come through. God has already done it. God has already defeated the enemy. He's just giving you some tools so you can stand. Because Ephesians 6, you know, I think around verse 13, 14, it actually says, after you've done all this that you can do to stand, it says, stand anyway with this equipment, knowing that God has already given you the ability to stand in the midst of the enemy. So here's a couple of things. The point is, it's not whether you can stand. God has equipped you to do that. The question is, will you get back up? Will you get back up? If you're battling in your life and you're saying, I'm down, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to come to church. I'll lift my hands so that when I get here, I just feel a little better. 
You know, that, you know, when you're down, you know you can't serve when you're down. You have to get back up. Because in you is all this service, all this ability, all this anointing, all this power, all this authority to do so many things. But when you're down, you can't use it. So God just requires you just to get back up again. Um, Donnie McClurkin sings these songs, you can get back up again. He said, because the sinner is just a saint, you know, who's fallen down and can get back up again. Sometimes we fail, but we can get back up again. You don't have to stay down. You can get back up again. Um, and then there's, for Proverbs 24, 16 says, for the righteous falls seven times and rises again. The righteous fall seven times and rise again. Please understand, I'm not so Holy Ghost strong. I'm not that guy that, you know, has it all together. I've been at this for a little while serving God. But every day, there's crying. Every day, there's some weeping. Every day, there's a failure that I encounter. I can go to work every day, and I, can, I find myself at some place sitting in a corner somewhere just asking God to forgive me for something I've said or something I didn't do right or some action that I didn't respond to correctly because, you know, every day is a battle, but every day I keep getting back up again. The devil's not going to find me laying on the ground defeated. He's not going to find me. That's not the place where I, I, that I want to be found. I want to be found laying on the ground. You know, here's the, the thing is, is that it's not that I'm laying down, that I want to see my enemy defeated before me. And so I begin to take a stand in everything. And so number one, like I said, there's a stand you just have to take. You just got to get up. One pastor said, listen, you just got to get up, dust yourself off, and get moving. I had, I had a brother say to me one day, he said, if I see you sitting in the road, I'm going to offer you my hand to help you to get back up. But if you don't want to get up, I've got to move on. I've got to keep going. And sometimes we're standing here stopping, trying to help people get up that don't want to get up. And what they do instead of, <laughs> instead of you helping them up, they're pulling you down. And sometimes you just got to let him go and say, if that's where you want to be, that's fine. But I got to move on. I'm going to live this thing. I'm going to be victorious in this thing. I'm going to love God with all my heart. I know it looks bad for me right now, but I know Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. He's already provided a way. He's made my path straight. There's a highway called holiness. I love this. There's a highway called holiness, and only the pure in heart can walk on it. Amen. And it was designed for us, and I'm walking on that highway, and I may stumble on it. You may stumble on it, but here's the clue. Here's the a clear message to you, you can get back up again. So you can make a stand. The most frustrating thing for me as a believer is seeing Christians who give up and they end up on the trash heap of Christianity. There's this pile of Christian men and women who have given up, who have thrown in the towel, have let someone else throw in the towel for them and not really realizing, get off the pile and stand up. Get off the pile. There's such an equipping. There's such an anointing that you have. There's such a love and a passion that you have for God that you forget about it when you're on the pile. Get up. Hallelujah. Number two, there's a declaration you have to make. Sometimes we just got to say what God says. And I'm not talking about name it, claim it. I'm not talking about word of faith. I'm talking about just saying what God says. Sometimes you just got to say what God says. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. You got to change your conversation. You got to change your conversation. Uh, listen, let me just read a couple of passages here. And what they're going to show you up on the screen there and uh, maybe in, in uh, Amplify. So I'm going to be reading this in in the uh, ESV version, and this is David in his encounter with Goliath. But listen to saying what God says. And David said to the men, this is uh, uh, 1 Samuel 17, 26, and David said to the man who stood by, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the approach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of God? Oh, let me give you another one. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go fight with this Philistine. 
Let me give you another one. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Oh, let me give you another one. And then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That should change your conversation. Sometimes we look at our foes and we look at the enemy, and he's just not that big. It's a matter of that we got to just call him what he is, an uncircumcised Philistine who is defying the armies of God, who is defying the people of God, who is defying you, who is a child of God. Sooner or later, you're just going to have to draw a line in the sand. This is as far as you go. You're not going any further. It stops here. The buck stops here. It's you and me, and it's on. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. You know, sometimes you get so accustomed to be defeated, you don't know how to win anymore. Sometimes you're just playing just to stay in the game instead of playing to win the game. I've watched, ba watched basketball games, and sometimes people play just not to lose. Why don't you just play to win? Because you've already won. Jesus Christ has given us the victory through his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary's hill. He's defeated the enemy on every hand, and all we got to do is walk in it. Oh, I, uh, all of us wear, oh, how many guys got on something that says Nike? How many guys say, yeah, I got something that says Nike? You know, every time you wear that, you're wearing the word victory. The word Nike means victory. Every time you put on a pair of, a pair of Nike shoes, you ought to say, I'm walking in victory. <laughs> I am walking in absolute victory. Yeah. You say, oh, I got to go get me some Nikes now because <laughs> I'm walking in Adidas right now. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you, know, you have to change your conversation. One of the things that I realized is that the minute that I began to draw lines in the sand, I drew lines in the sands about my finances. I drew lines in the sand about my children. I drew lines in the sand about work. I drew lines in the sand about ministry. I drew lines in the sand concerning my walk with God. And I said, I am not going, enemy, you're not going to go any further with me than this. And some of us, we let people walk up on our line. Stop letting the enemy walk up on your line. You know, here's the whole thing. We like, I like this, there's a term we use, uh, it's called pushback. It means sometimes you just got to push back and stop being pushed around. You got to stop being pushed around and recognize who you are and who you belong to. Oh, really? Oh, no, devil. These are my children. Oh, no, devil. That's my wife. Oh, no, devil. That's my finances. You don't get to do that to me. You don't, belong, you don't know who I belong to. I'm a child of the Most High God. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I'm a child of the King. I'm an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That sounds like a change in conversation, doesn't it? Sometimes you just got to call things as that be not as though they were. I'm not talking about word of faith. I'm not talking about name and claim. And I'm talking about the Word of God. Which is, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, which divides asunder, cuts between the joint and the marrow, and discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart, the Word of God. And we begin to speak the Word of God. See, some of us, and this is just an old saying, some of you guys, we need to get enough Word in us when we start to become like teabag Christians. You know what teabag Christians are? If you take hot water and you pour hot water on a teabag, what do you get out of the, what do you get out of the teabag? Tea. Some of us, when we get under pressure, we need to have enough word in us that when the situation gets hot and the pressure comes on us, when they pour, the enemy pours, I think the only thing that comes out of you is the word of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. It doesn't matter. It just comes out of you because the pressure doesn't bother you. The intensity doesn't bother you. One of the things that really... Um, 
Make sure I'm not, okay, I'm good, I'm good. I got seven minutes, I can get through this, okay. All right, so um, one of the things that really impressed me about my nephew playing yesterday when he played against Duke, he's the point guard for his team, and they double teamed him the whole night. And his team was just, at one point they were so flustered, but he recognized who he was. My son tells, told me that my nephew, when he gets to a game, if you see him start to walk up and down the sidelines, He's praying. He's praying that God will give him wisdom and the strength to play the game the way he's capable of playing. And so there was a calmness that he had as he played. Let me tell you something. There's a place where we're going to need to start praying that God can give us the calmness that we get in a crisis situation that we'll do what's necessary to beat the devil when we necessarily, when we have to do it. We'll be able to stand when we have to stand. Listen, sometimes it's hard to stand, but sometimes you just got to get up. And then... <laughs> Eric said this in the second service, and sometimes we just have to let God have his place. We have to allow God to assume the proper posture and position in our lives to infuse us with the ability to stand that we never thought we would have or be able to accomplish. Let God have his place. He wants to have the preeminence over our lives. We have to let him get out front. Oh, you got to hear what I'm saying. Sometimes we want to be in charge. Lord, I'll get up if you let me. God, I'll do this if you will allow me. God, it's okay that you guys, it's okay that you're in the building, but that's good you're here. But right now, I'm in charge right now. I, I like I said, uh, you know, I am the driver, Jesus is my co-pilot. Why don't you let him drive a little bit? Why don't you let him get behind the wheel and see where he takes you? You will find when you allow God to lead you and you allow him to take the proper, listen to this, the proper position and posture in your life. Position is as the head. Posture is allowing him to stand as the head. You can have a certain position, but you can have poor posture. You can, listen, you can have, a, you can be in a position, but you have no posture. And there's a position of, you can, I can be in a position where I, I'm like this before God, but my posture needs to be like this before my enemy. My position is kneeling, my posture is standing. Hear what I'm saying. My position is kneeling, my posture is standing. I'm allowing God to be in my life who he said he would be to me. I can't tell you of the frustration and the failures in 38 years of serving God that I've experienced. And there's none to tell you of the, the, the failures and the nights of crying, my wife and I, and seeing different things going wrong in our lives and not the days when we probably didn't have enough food to make it. And, uh, and God just said, get up. See, when we got up, we realized God delivered us. Now hear what I'm saying. When we got up, we realized God had delivered us. And when we realized that God had delivered us, God had given us a testimony. And so what happened is our testimony, nobody can tell our testimony like we can. Nobody can tell you how God delivered us in the midst of our trials and our frustration and our fears and our disappointments. Nobody can tell that testimony like we can. But if you come to us and you're going through something, what you'll hear is our testimony. You'll hear that God helped us to stand when we weren't able to stand. You will hear how God delivered us, how we went to a doctor and we didn't have any money to pay for our, do our daughters that had a double ear infection. And we didn't have the money. And, and I told my wife, we're just going to pray for them. And my wife said, no, no, no. We're just going to take them to the doctor and let the doctor tell us what it is. And when we got to the doctor and the doctor said, you've got double ear infections and you need to buy this prescription. And we said, well, where are we going to get the money for this? Well, we don't know. We stuck our fingers in their ears. We went back two days and the doctor said, uh, uh, so y'all got the medicine and said, no, we prayed and God healed their ears. I'm just telling you, there comes a place, there's a testimony. 
that comes out of you getting up and standing. There's a testimony that comes out of you standing. So, I want you guys come on up here, play some music, because I'm done. <laughs> so, taking a stand says this this far and no further. Taking stand says, if you think you're big enough or bad enough, take another step. I, I was hoping, can y'all throw that picture up there for me? That's what you should look like. <laughs> I, um, I was thinking, when I was thinking about the thing boxing, and I remember, I was, you know, I remember this fight against Sonny Liston, and I remember Cassius Clay and Muhammad Ali, he was Cassius Clay at that time, but at Muhammad Ali standing over him and that look he had him, I dare you to get back up. I, get up. He's not talking about the life of a believer. He's talking about the enemy. Sometimes you just got to knock him out cold and then stand over him and say, yeah, and what? It is what David, you got to hear what David did, this very thing. The Bible says that David, when he finished proclaiming the word of the Lord at Goliath, Goliath started at him and David ran at him. It's on. I'm telling you, you don't have to be ashamed of your failures. You don't have to stand behind Jesus and weep. Just come around to the front and look in his face and see the love and the compassion that he has for your life. That he paid an awesome price. She dried his feet with her tears. But in the end, Jesus said, stand, get up. It's going to be okay. I'm telling you this morning, you can stand to your feet this afternoon. Take a stand. Draw a line in the stand, in the sand. Push back. Be who God has called you to be. Hear me again. Be who God has called you to be. Walk in the liberty wherein Christ has set you free. Remember what the devil meant for evil, God's going to work for good. The Bible says something like this. He said, he who spared not his own son, how shall he not freely also with him give us all things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, that, and that's, that's before he says, he that spared not his own son. That's the passage just before that. What I'm saying is, if God is for you, who can be against you? So stand. Stand so God can use you, so you can serve and you can bless and you can meet the needs of others, that you can begin to proclaim the testimony of all that God has done in your lives. God, you have to know, I believe if, if I ask a show of hand, everyone in this room has had some experience in their life where God has dumped something that nobody else could understand how it was done, but you know that only God could have done what he did in your life. And it's a testimony, hear what I'm saying. It's a testimony that someone needs to hear. And if you're laying on the floor, oh God, oh, oh God, if you just get up, oh, uh, Derek said something this morning and it so grabbed my heart. God always creates an environment where everyone is welcome. God has created an environment in your life that will draw people to you, that you can welcome them into the kingdom of God through the testimony that, of what you've experienced in your life. What you, your life is not wasted. What you've gone through is not just some tragedy. It was something that God wants to use to bless the heart of another person. Some will be delivered because of what you've been through. Somebody will be set free because of what you've been through. Someone will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because if God can do that for you, he can do that for me. 
You see, that's my salvation. That's my testimony. On the streets of Boston, Massachusetts, on Charmant Avenue, 300 Charmant Avenue, I ran into a friend of mine who was a drug addict, who dealt drugs. And I was still dealing with drugs and battling myself. And this young man came up to me and said, do you know Jesus? And I was like, whoa, this guy never talks. This guy never says anything. He's always stoned. He says, oh, I accepted Jesus and my life has never been the same. And so I'm saved now and I'm born again. And I'm standing there on Sharman Avenue. My wife was there and she said, I just started crying. And I said, just like this, Lord, if you can do that in him, do that in me. And on the streets of Boston, Massachusetts, not at an altar, not in a church building, I met Jesus Christ. And 38 years later, I'm still serving. I'm still battling. I'm still standing. I, I fall, absolutely, but I'm still standing. You gotta know you can stand. There's nothing that you can go through that you'll ever go through in your life that should keep you down that you can't get back up from. You can get back up again. Come on, say it with me. I can get back up again. Say it, I can get back up again. I can get back up again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just need every head bowed, every eye closed. If you recognize today, there's just been some things that have gone on in your life and you struggled getting back up again. I just want you to shoot your hand up real quick and just say, I'm gonna get back up again. Come on, just shoot your hand up all over the building. I see every hand. I, I need to get back up. I've been down long enough. The devil has talked about me. People have made accusations, but I'm getting back up again. You can put your hands down. If you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, you need to get back. You need to stand. You need to get back up. You need to get up and stop living the life that you're living right now and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He will revolutionize your life. You will never be the same. You'll never have to feel down. You'll always find an ability to get back up again if you'll just accept him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. So I'm asking once again, every eye closed, every head bowed, I really need you to do that. If that's you this morning, you need just to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I was on Charmin Avenue on, in Boston on the street, and I said, I need that Jesus in my life. If you need this Jesus in your life, just raise your hand real quick, and we're just going to pray with you. Come on, just raise your hand. Thank you. I see those hands. So, Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, God, we thank you for causing us to stand. Lord, for no longer feeling ashamed. We don't have to cry. We can get back up and find salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for all those that raised their hand. They're, they've gotten up and they're drawing lines in the sand. They say, no more, no further, devil. This is as far as you go in my life. I'm going to serve Jesus all the days of my life. Would you pray this with me? Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Make me whole. Make me new. I renounce sin in my life. I thank you for setting me free. Today I choose to make you Lord of my life. Today I get up and I stand for the things of God. And I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you guys. Thank you for coming. Come on, let's give God a great praise. He's worthy. Amen. We pray you guys have a blessed week, that God uses you mightily that you find yourself standing in every situation and every circumstance. Have a blessed week in the Lord, and you're dismissed. We'll see you real soon.